Hey everybody, David Shapiro here with a quick video. This one is gonna be a tutorial on how to use Codex. Codex is still in private beta, so by the time you see this, um, things might have changed, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, we're just gonna do, I'm gonna do a couple like Python and SQL queries and just basic stuff to show you kind of what's, what's going on. But first, um, you'll notice the model name is Code DaVinci 02. And then uh, the temperature defaults to zero, which means it's deterministic and it'll put it'll output the same thing every time. So when you're doing code, especially if you describe what you want uh, accurately, you're gonna want it to generate the same thing every time. So temperature, you generally wanna leave that lower, although sometimes you can turn it up if you wanna get more creativity. Um, I will do another video about all the parameters and what they mean, but for now, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So control enter to uh, run this says def get reddit data um, oh so you might notice that I didn't specify a language I'm gonna hit escape because it is going off on its own um, so I didn't specify a language but the three um, individual uh, single single quotes um, that forms a text block in Python so if I copy this out whoops go to here so I'll just copy this codex 01 save it so you see it's commented out basically now, what do you think is going to happen if I run this? Well, first, I want to delete the stuff that I don't want, right? Because it just kind of took it and ran with it. So let's save that. And then let's go um, here. Let's see, CD, uh, Python tutorial, and then Python codex. Uh, it didn't do anything. All right, because I didn't call anything. Um, so let's do, let's add this here. Um, so basically, it wrote the function for me. But if we go back to this, I didn't actually ever call it. So we got to call the function that we wrote. Oh, and let me increase the um, font size of this. I apologize so you can actually see it. There we go. Okay, now we're up to speed. All right. So then we'll just call this function and we'll do um, print this function and call it, leave it at that. All right, so now let's see what happens. Ah, name requests is not defined. So what the heck? Um, so let's just put, plug this in and say, uh, let's go back to codex. So basically what I did, I know that went really fast. So at the generally speaking with, with Python, you'll see like at the very end, if there's an error, it'll tell you what the error was. Now it'll also give you the line, right? So it says line seven in get reddit data response equals re requests get URL, et cetera, et cetera. And it says name error or name error, name request is not defined. So that means it doesn't know what I mean by requests. And if we look at line seven, you see right here, um, it says, I don't know what this is. You didn't, you didn't define this anywhere. Um, so let's copy paste this in and, uh, and then we'll go to a different um, endpoint, which is edit, which is also still in beta. So the edit endpoint works on, um, works on code as well. So what I'll do is I'll say, fix the following error in this Python script. And so then we'll go back to my command prompt and we'll copy this and we'll say, hey, fix this error. And let's see what it does. Ah, look at that. So can you spot the difference? It has import requests up here. So let's see if it fixed it for me. Import request, that looks right. Oops, let's go back to my command prompt. Ta-da! and it returned the front page of Reddit in JSON format, which is usable. That's a data format that's usable by clients, such as Python. Um, so there you have it. That is that is uh, using Codex and then the edit feature to fix something. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can make this a little bit better. Whoops. Um, hang on, there we go. Grab that, we'll come back to this. And let's say, um, Modify the function uh, get Reddit data. Um, let's see, what do we want to pull instead? Uh, to pull top posts from the last hour. And let's see if edit works there. Oh, that was quick. It says uh, top.json uh, question t hour. I don't know if that's going to work. Let's try it. I don't think that that's the right format for, for JSON. Um, I think you have to put the .json at the end. I don't remember though. Let's see if it works.
What are you doing? There we go. Hey, it worked. Cool. Okay. So let's go back to Codex though, because um, edit is fun, but let's go back. I promised, I promised to show you how to do code. So let's do code. Um, all right. So what are we going to do instead? Um, uh, I don't remember what the, what the comment is on a SQL query. Um, what is the comment uh, on a SQL query? It's been a while since I've uh, used to explain comments. Yeah, where is it? Uh, dash dash. Okay, it's been a while since I've done SQL. Which so this is exactly what you'd use Codex for. It's like I haven't done this in a while. How am I going to do this? Okay, so the following SQL query um, will give me all the details of the um, PostgreSQL. Am I saying that right? PostgreSQL. Um, we'll just we'll just say Postgre uh, SQL database, um, and then we'll s leave it at that. That's interesting. Code select from PG catalog PG tables. There you go. Okay. It's interesting that um, that it had code, so it it wrapped it in XML. Um, so that's fascinating. So, but I bet if we just do select. Um, it'll, there we go. All right. And then it, 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 so here's the thing is it tends to just kind of take it and run with it, whatever it is that you wanted it to do. Um, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. of the SQL table of the table where schema name. Okay. Um, let's see, where was I going to go from here? Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. let's do, um, the next query will, um, show me details of the, um, table indices. I don't know if that'll work, but we'll see what it does. Okay. Just PG indexes. The table constraints. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so it's just pulling all the different bits from Postgre. Um, let's see, let's do PowerShell because PowerShell is something that I'm more familiar with and my brain just blanked. What is the comment on PowerShell? Um, import module, uh, PSUtil. Um, seriously, why, why is my brain blanking today? Uh, PowerShell comment. That's what I thought. Okay, my brain just wasn't giving me that information. Um, uh, this PowerShell script will um, save every prime number from one to, uh, let's not go too crazy, to a thousand um, in a CSV file. Okay, and so then we'll just do, let's just let it go and see what happens. Hey, look at that. Okay. Um, all right. So it says this PowerShell script will save every prime number from one to a thousand in a CSV file. So it starts with um, dollar primes equals um, splat and then uh, whoops and then parentheses. So that's oh darn it. <laughs> what did I do? I hit Control Z too many times. Can I bring it back? Please come back. Okay. Now let me run it again. I'll run this again and then I'll copy it out to a, a different interpret or to a different thing. Um, okay, we don't need the instructions how to use, although it is nice that it's giving it to us. Um, so let's save this here. We'll do language P PowerShell. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So primes, it, so this, this instantiates a list, and then we do four. So this is a conventional for loop. So for i equals two, and for while i is less than or equal to a thousand, we increment i plus one. So that's how you declare a, a for loop in, in good old C or C++. It's fascinating that PowerShell just kind of copied that syntax exactly. So then you say is prime equals true. And then what you do is, so this is fascinating. So the logic that it used is it, it gives us another iterable. So it says um, two, and then so while j, so j starts at two, while j is less than i, so this is our number i, 
we're going to increment j. So basically, every number up until our um, the one that we're we're counting um, is is that. And then so we use the modulo, which is the you know, so you have dividend and remainder. So if you divide them, and there's a remainder of zero, which means it, it divided in in evenly, um, then you say it's not it's not prime, and you break right. So then you exit the loop, and so then if it is still prime, then you add it to the list, and then um, it exports export CSV to path whatever. I didn't specify. I just said okay, drop it on my desktop. This won't work because my username is not user, um, and then it adds no type information. I love that. Um, type information makes CSV kind of like wonky. All right, so let's let's do a quick thing. Let's do ISE. That's not what I wanted. ISE. There we go. PowerShell ISE. So ISE is uh, is the integrated interpreter for PowerShell. Let's see. View script pane right. Let's close commands. Now I do want to clean this up a little bit because like um, let me show you. There's a couple things wrong with it. So I don't want this. I don't need those. I don't need those instructions. Um, and I also don't want to um, do it. I'll just do write host. No, not debug. Darn it. Write host. Oh, can I zoom in? There we go. OK, so then we run this. Oh, wow, that was really fast. So then 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. So far, so good. I don't know the prime numbers off the top of my head, but it looks like it got them. So there you have it. Um, let me do a time check. Oh yeah, we're at eleven minutes. Perfect. Okay, so you've got an, you've got your feet wet with um, with uh, with Codex. Um, I've shown you a couple things just right off the bat, so you get an intuition of, of how to get started. It often does barf out more stuff than you need, um, and so it's just a matter of you get the function that you want, you clean it up, and then you're good to go. All right, well, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon if you like what I do. If I get enough supporters, I could probably do this full time. Who knows?